Hey, what is up, dudes? My name is Riggy, and today, welcome back to another Storytimes video. Now, this is going to be a good one because I'm going to be telling you guys exactly what not to do when you're giving blood. What not to do at all when you're going to give blood and what may or may not happen if you do these sort of things. So, uh, if you guys are enjoying the Storytimes uh, episodes, make sure to drop them a like. And uh, if you guys missed any of the other Storytimes video, there will be a link in the description below and a annotation on your screen to go click it and watch it after this video. So I got some World at War gameplay for you guys right here today as I get a nice little triple spray right there, finishing it off with a headshot and then get it taken down. Hope you guys will enjoy the gameplay. It's just kind of background gameplay to have your eyes attracted to something as you guys listen to me ramble on about a story so the story today is how I passed out at a blood drive now you guys might be saying you know what there's a lot of people that pass out a blood drive right a lot of people do they just it's just a natural thing that happens when you give blood maybe you just get a little woozy maybe you're just not used to uh, giving blood maybe you're just a little anxious because of the needle maybe you don't like the needle you don't like how it's going in you don't like the feeling of it maybe you're seeing the blood bag and you're like whoa whoa that's a lot of blood dude that's a lot of blood I don't want that taken out of my body that seems way too much blood and I don't want to have that happen to me and then you get a little woozy and you faint and or maybe just after the blood situation you're just feeling a little weird because you didn't uh, eat anything all day maybe that's a scenario but in my case something a little bit different happened so starting around sophomore year I actually got into giving blood at school I think I gave it two times uh, that year uh, at our high school we had a blood drive that would actually come to our school and go into our one of our old uh, gymnasiums or gyms or whatever you guys want to call it and uh, they would actually set up there and basically look like a Vietnam hospital that just arrived in the god dang school and it's freaking crazy because that's literally what it looked like it looked pretty ghetto but very sanitized uh, at the same time. Very very sanitary at the same time, which is really awesome. Um, but I decided to give blood because my friends gave blood. And then, you know, everyone said it was a good thing to give blood. You should probably always give blood. And I always had this thing at the back of my mind. was like, <sighs> what if one of these times the girls that I had sex with or did anything with actually gave me AIDS and or hepatitis or anything like that? And it's going to show up on the blood thing. So I was always very, very scared to do it, even though I knew at the back of my time or back of my head that that's not possible because I don't have sex with ghetto chicks and, you know, uh, you know, just the nasty chicks. I don't have sex with them. But and at the time, I didn't have sex with a lot of girls. I probably had sex with maybe like two or three or something around there. And uh, yeah, so I was like, oh my god, what if it actually happens? Even though it didn't, uh, but it was a thing that was in the back of my mind always. So I was like, okay, I gave blood twice that year. That was awesome, right? So junior year comes around, and it's about that time. Same time uh, when the blood drive comes. It's about a week in advance, and I'm like, yeah, let's all give blood. Let's sign up. And we had to go, uh, specifically, I remember, uh, to a uh, teacher because I think the blood drive slips were out of the actual school and like the front office and everything like that so you actually had to go to the teacher that had them and the teacher was kind of a bitch she was a cunt she was like an old lady that was not a very nice old lady and she was she kind of looked at me funny because you know I had my ears stretched in junior year and uh, I was kind of that you know that freaky kid and uh, she was probably like why is she giving blood he's, he's probably like a little douchebag why is she giving blood and uh, so that's pretty much what we had to go through and to get uh, the slip and actually sign up and participate in the blood drive uh, and yeah so we had that all situation going on I was going with my friends uh, two of my friends because we went together sophomore year and we're like let's do it all over again so the time comes around about a day before and um, or two days before and we're like oh you guys are all ready for the blood drive it's coming up in a couple days and we're like yeah 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 we're all ready we're all ready a uh, day passes and it's the day before the blood drive all right and uh, we're all like yeah yeah the blood drive yeah okay we'll all be hydrated and everything we'll all eat a whole bunch before that make sure not to drink any Mountain Dews and everything like that and you'll be totally set don't caffeinate yourself whatsoever and you'll be good to go now the day comes and the blood drive as you know is gone from my mind. It's completely gone. I spaced it out of my mind so much. I might have had like a test the next day or something like that that was just on my mind and I was just not worrying about it. Or maybe I had a girlfriend at the time that I just totally forgot about it because I got that pussy the day before. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I did or not. But I, I had something going through my mind that just totally blanked out the uh, blood drive. And I was like, holy shit, blood drive. That's happening. Yeah, my friend came up to me. He's like, dude, you ready for the blood drive? And I was like, oh. Oh shit. And he was like, what? I was like, dude. Dude. I drank six Mountain Dews last night. And don't get me wrong. You guys want me saying six Mountain Dews? 
Bullshit. I, I literally had a drinking problem <laughs> in high school. A Mountain Dew drinking problem. I literally would game and drink probably six to eight Mountain Dews. And I know that's very unhealthy for you. But I don't gain a single pound from anything. I can eat like a whole bunch of food and drink a whole bunch of soda. I could eat anything unhealthy. I could eat god dang lards of fat. I'd probably throw up, but I would not gain a single pound uh, at the time. So, uh, during that time, I was drinking a whole bunch of caffeine, and I was like, dude, I drank six Mountain Dews, and I'm super caffeinated. That's not good, because you could easily, easily uh, faint from that. And at the time, I never drank really any water. The only time I drank water was then it was the only thing around. Literally the only thing around. Uh, so I started, I was like, dude, anybody got, anybody got water? Anybody got water? Please, anybody have water? Anybody have water around them? And I finally had one of my friends give me a bottle of water, and I thought that would put me through uh, throughout the day. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll be good. Maybe I'll be a little bit better. And uh, as the day passes, I'm kind of like, kind of getting anxious. I'm like, this is not going to be good. This is not going to be good. And my friend's like, I told you, dude, that I told you the day before to be uh, very, very fueled up for this. Drink a lot of water and uh, don't drink any Mountain Dews whatsoever. Don't drink coffee. Don't drink anything that has caffeine in it and you'll be good to go. And I was like, dude, oh my God, I messed up. I literally messed up. And I could not believe that I did that. And now when we're going into the blood drive here... They have to weigh you, right? They have to weigh you. Uh, certain people cannot give blood because they're uh, under their weight limit. So if you're like a chick that's probably like 5'2", I think the weight limit's like 110 pounds, and then you can give blood. Otherwise, you could pass out a lot easier, and I think it's something to do with health reasons and stuff like that. Uh, so they had to give you, you had to stand on a scale, they had to get your weight, they had to get your height. They had to get your name, your background, everything like that. And uh, after that was done, you have to go to uh, one of these little side areas where, like, a girl will prick your finger and then do blood samples and get your, uh, you know, your glucose level and all that crazy good stuff and test you for HIV and, uh, you know, all that crazy stuff. AIDS, syphilitis, uh, her forgotten syphilitis, anything like that. I don't know, hepatitis, I guess. Anything uh, that you could contract to other people if you actually gave blood to someone else, they could get it then and somewhat. So that's why I was always in the back of my mind. I was like, dude, if I had that, would they tell me? Would they tell me? Would they really tell me if I had that? <laughs> like, I was always sketching about that. But, uh, yeah, so after that was done, uh, we were good to go. Everybody uh, was, uh, we had to sit down and pretty much watch other people give blood. Uh, there was people uh, going around uh, the school actually fainting before us. I remember there's drug dealers that were, or not drug dealers, drug kids. Like, kids that would literally smoke a whole bunch of weed before uh, and uh, do a whole bunch of other drugs and stuff like that would actually give blood. And for some reason, I don't know why that did not show up. In their blood test or anything like that to say that they were doing drugs the day before or uh, early in the morning and uh, the people that would give blood that uh, did a lot of drugs smoke weed and everything like that uh, they would go smoke weed afterwards because it would make them way more higher from just a little bit of weed or whatever drugs they did and uh, it was a little weird because the kids that did that were the ones fainting in the hallways and falling over and needed wheelchairs and everything like that and I was like ha 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 you guys are dicks and I was like I'm not gonna faint there's no way that's gonna happen to me I'm a, I'm a big guy I don't do drugs and uh, yeah so I was getting all ready we we're waiting in the seats uh, my friends go ahead of me and uh, actually no I go ahead of them I believe I, I was the first one and um, I get ready I get situated it's the same thing that happened last year just put it in my arm I have a nice old lady that's sitting next to me she's really nice to me and uh, she asked me if I have any problems to let her know and uh, if I feel like I need to lay down more afterwards uh, she'll lay me down and uh, I was good to go and we started pumping away and uh, I remember this chick that was probably a senior uh, kept coming up to me I don't know if she was trying to hit on me or what she was trying to do but uh, she kept trying to give me this teddy bear to hold on to and uh, she gave me it and I was holding on to it and uh, the lady kept tol uh, telling me to squeeze on this like stress ball or stress sponge or something uh, so it would pump my blood a little bit faster I guess my blood doesn't come out as fast into the bag which is probably a good thing but probably not a good thing at the same time because I bet you uh, it's a little thicker than normal um, I think good blood actually runs a little bit better, but then again, maybe if I get my artery cut, I won't die as fast, so that could be a thing. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, so I'm pumping away my blood, right? I'm pumping away my blood, and uh, it takes about 10 minutes or so to get that blood uh, bag filled or something like that. And uh, my friends are sitting next to me, and they're already, like, gone, even though they, like, came after me. And I was just sitting there, and I was relaxing. Uh, they were sitting over in the food area, and I was just sitting there. I was like, oh, wow, okay, this is cool. And uh, she's pulling out the needle, and I'm good to go, and I was just been laying there. I was like, wow, 
This is actually going pretty smooth. I thought I would, uh, you know, feel a little bit worse than what I uh, did normally. Because when I first gave blood, I kept feeling a little bit... A little bit like pass out wise like I was feeling that like head uh, kind of wobbly thing like you're kind of like tipsy uh, that's how I was feeling like my head was rocking back and forth when I originally gave blood but this time it was going smooth it was going smooth sailing I was holding on that teddy bear to for dear life I was like this is comfortable I'm good to go and she let me uh, sit up for a little bit now sitting there and uh, what do you know black just blackness just complete utter blackness Supposedly during this time my friends told me that I was turning green I was literally turning into the Incredible Hulk my screen my like skin color was just green My eyes were getting yellow and uh, I was just gone. I was literally just gone They said once I went out. I was literally reaching up for nothing I was just reaching out for someone to help me and I just fainted just gone just out and um, at the time I didn't know anything because when you pass out, I don't know if any of you guys pass out before you don't know that it happened It's just gone like you you just there for a second and gone just instantly out and uh, For me, I kind of felt like I was dreaming a little bit, but not dreaming at the same time So when I'm start coming to it's kind of like that scene from the black ops one where it's like Mason Mason what are the numbers Mason and then you hear all these <laughs> Like noises coming around it literally was that I could hear the blood rushing in my head and uh, The frames like if you could pick from uh, say a video editing thing and you could put the picture Farther away where there's like blackness around it and you could have it pan to left and keep flashing left and left and left and left and uh, And then come to the right and left and right and left and right and you could kind of see that picture going back and forth And then with the blood rushing at the same time that's exactly what it was and then add your name being yelled out at the same time. So they were yelling, Tom, 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 are you awake? Are you okay? Are you okay? And I heard, Tom, 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 Tom. And it was just echoing and everything. And it was crazy. It was literally the most craziest thing ever. And I was trying to like, I was just reaching out for the doctors. There was like five doctors around me. I was just reaching out, reaching out before I finally came to. And supposedly, I actually, actually punched the nurse in the face as I was coming through. And I kind of remember that slightly because I remember lifting my arm up trying to reach for someone. And I punched her in the face. Yeah, so she's gonna remember me for the rest of her life. I, I swear that for her. but um, <laughs> I punched the nurse in the face uh, in the face the nice little sweet old lady I punched her in the face and uh, They finally get me they put like wet towels on my face I wake up with wet towels on my forehead on my neck on my arms everywhere just to wake me up And uh, they said I was out for like a minute or so and uh, they're really really scared Like I was out for longer than anyone else fainted uh, at the place and I told them I was like I didn't I didn't hydrate myself at all and they're like yeah that would happen and uh, that's why it started coming to uh, the lady the senior chick that gave me the teddy bear in the beginning uh, she came to and she was like super like scared she was like really scared for me she's like here here hold the teddy bear really hard and she went around she's like do you need a coke or something uh, they would literally go or not not the drug coke but they'd go and give you the coca-cola and uh, because it gives your blood uh, sugar level a little bit higher and you can get a little bit caffeinated and you can wake yourself up from that and uh, you always want to drink uh, or eat a lot of sugary stuff and drink a lot of sugary stuff after you give blood So that's what they made me do and I was just literally sitting in the in the little cafeteria area for like um, I don't know a good hour or so and uh, Basically by the end of that the school day was over and uh, my arm I just remember my arm hurting so badly from where they put the needle in I was literally sitting there throbbing It felt like the needle was still in there, but it kind of like the needle just got bigger and it made like a bruising feeling and my arm my veins on my arms were literally sticking out and it hurt so badly I just remember ow this hurts so god dang badly and uh, pretty much after that I just remember I'm supposed to hang out with the girlfriend after uh, school and uh, she probably wants to have sex and I don't want to do that because I'm afraid, you know, blood's going to be squirting everywhere. Like, my veins are going to get puffy and they're just going to pop and I'm just going to die. And I did have sex afterwards, and that, thank God, did, that did not happen. And thank God I did not live. I still have thought in my head, though, what if I'm still passed out at that blood drive right now and all this is fake? It's just, a, it's just not real. It's not in my reality. And I just wake up at the blood drive, junior year of high school, and I'm back there. That'd be crazy, 
But hope you guys did enjoy this video. This has been my story uh, of passing out of the blood drive. Let me know in the comment section below uh, if you guys have donated blood before, if you guys have passed out from anything serious, and how long have you passed out for, and tell me your, uh, your little pass out story or blood drive story in the comment section below. If you guys did enjoy this, make sure to leave it a like and a favorite, and uh, make sure to go check out my other story times videos in the outro, and there will be one on your screen right now as an annotation. Hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to go check out the other videos in the outro. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button, and I will catch your freaky faces in the next video. Come on! Come on, man! Come on! Come on! There we go.